The Kamal family were found dead in their estate. Confirming that it was indeed a murder-suicide that claimed the lives of a Dover family. The DA stopped short of calling this a murder-suicide. There were no Welcome true crime enthusiast to today's case. It was supposed to be a happy reunion. Tina's brother had flown in from India to spend the holidays with his sister and her family in Dover, Massachusetts. He had not seen them for a long time and was looking forward to catching up with them. Tina's brother had tried to call them several times, but they had not picked up. He thought they must be busy or maybe they had gone out and then decided to surprise them by showing up at their door. The man drove to their address, a sprawling mansion in a secluded area, admiring the elegant elegant architecture and the manicured lawn, and wondered how his sister and her husband, Rakesh, a successful businessman, had managed to afford such a lavish lifestyle. He parked his car and walked to the front door and rang the bell, but there was no answer. Tina's brother knocked, but there was no response, tried opening the door, and found it unlocked. He opened it and stepped inside. Greeted by a scene of horror, blood was splattered on the walls and the floor, bullet holes were visible in the furniture, and the windows and the stench of death and gunpowder filled the air. Suddenly, there was a surge of fear and panic, and he called out for his sister, brother-in-law, niece, but there was no reply, but was met by bodies that were lying on the floor, motionless and lifeless. They had been shot multiple times, their faces and bodies mutilated by the bullets. They were bodies he could recognize, but wished he hadn't. Collapsing on his knees, sobbing, he reached for his phone and dialed 911. The 911 operator who answered the call could barely understand the caller's voice, as the caller was speaking in a mix of English and Hindi, and was was being hysterical and inconsolable. He said he had found his sister and her family dead in their house. They had been murdered and did not know who had done it or why. The caller proceeded to say that he needed help because he was scared. As the 911 operator tried to calm the caller down, he requested his name, the victim's identities, and a description of the scene. He also inquired if the caller had witnessed or heard anything unusual, if he had any company, or if there were other occupants in the house. The caller remained on the line until the arrival of the police and the paramedics, while the operator contacted the homicide unit and the crime scene investigators and informed his boss of the situation. The operator realized this was a major case that would make the news and a terrible day that would linger in his memory. As the sirens blared, the first responders reached the house of horror. The caller's car was parked outside, a silent witness to the tragedy. With caution, they stepped inside and gasped at the bloody scene. Yep, we got a blanket over him. See him? Is anybody at the back door? Put someone on the back door. Oh, we've got to, I think, hurry, we're going to have to go in right now. Yeah. Bob, if you have got one down on the floor, we're going to get over on. Muskogee Police, Police Department. Department! It's the Muskogee Police Department! Four or two shots fired. Shots Four or two fired. shots fired. One on four. Just see if you can hold that. I'm going to get our, uh, Shields in the back of my trunk. Oh, yeah, I got the shield too. Okay, just hold that right there. It came from the right, didn't it? It came from the kitchen back there. It's the Muskogee Police Department! 530 if you haven't started emails. In the living room, the caller sat next to three lifeless bodies. A quick check confirmed their worst fears. No pulse, no hope. A handgun lay next to Rakesh Kamal, who clutched a note in his hand. I'm sorry, I love you, goodbye, it read, without any remorse or reason for his heinous act. The police deduced that he had shot his wife and daughter, then himself, in a twisted murder-suicide. The Dover police received a 911 call at approximately 7.24 in the evening, the call came from a family member who was doing a well-being check at, at the residence of 8 Wilson's Way to check on family members. Uh, that individual entered the property and he did find a, uh, a, an apparent victim at that time and that he immediately had called 911 to, uh, to report it. Um, the Dover police immediately responded. Um, three individuals who were all residents of the home uh, were found to be deceased. They handcuffed the caller and took him away for interrogation. The paramedics carried the corpses to the morgue. The investigators collected the clues and snapped the photos, trying to make sense of the senseless. 
what had happened in that house? What had driven Rakesh Kamal to commit such a heinous act? What secrets had he and his family kept behind closed doors? This is the story of the Dover family tragedy, a case of domestic violence that shocked the community and left many unanswered questions. They seemed like the perfect family. The Kamals had it all, wealth, fame, and happiness. But behind the closed doors of their mansion, a dark and sinister secret was brewing. A secret that would lead to a horrific and bloody crime that shocked the nation. Rakesh Kamal was a ruthless and arrogant man who ruled his family with an iron fist. He was the founder and CEO of a software company that specialized in artificial intelligence and machine learning, who was also hailed as a genius and a visionary in his field and had amassed a fortune and a reputation that made him one of the most powerful and influential men in the country. He had also been featured in Forbes, Wired and the Wall Street Journal as one of the most innovative and successful entrepreneurs of his generation. But Rakesh had a dark side. He was a compulsive gambler and a heavy drinker who often lost control of his temper and his impulses. A man who was a violent and abusive husband treated his wife Tina like a slave and a punching bag and constantly humiliated and insulted her in public and in private and made her feel worthless and helpless. He also controlled every aspect of her life, from what she wore, to what she ate, to whom she spoke to, and isolated her from her friends and family, and made her dependent on him for everything. Giving up her aspirations to be a mother and a homemaker, Tina Kamal devoted herself to her husband and daughter, whom she cherished above all. Despite Rakesh's violence and scorn, she clung to the hope that he would transform, value, and adore her. She protected Ariana from his fury and showed her generosity and compassion by serving various causes in her community. Art and culture ignited her passion, and she delighted in exploring and acquiring new languages. Ariana Kamal was the pride and joy of her parents, as well as a brilliant and gifted student who excelled in academics, sports, and music. She was the valedictorian of her class, the captain of the soccer team, and the first chair of the orchestra, who had also been accepted to Harvard University, with a full scholarship and a prestigious fellowship. Ariana had a dream of becoming a professional violinist and had performed at several concerts and competitions, both locally and internationally. The little girl was a sweet and cheerful girl who had a lot of friends and admirers. She was also a loyal and loving daughter who adored her mother and respected her father. The family lived in a $6.79 million mansion on Wilson's Way, a private road that housed some of the most exclusive and luxurious properties in the town. The mansion was a masterpiece of modern architecture with six bedrooms, seven bathrooms, a pool, a gym, a library, and a home theater. The mansion was also equipped with the latest technology and security systems and was surrounded by a lush and manicured garden. The family had a lavish and comfortable lifestyle and seemed to have everything they could ever want or need. But on the night of January 6th, 2024, everything changed. Something snapped in Rakesh's mind and he decided to end his family's life. He grabbed a gun and went on a rampage. He shot Tina multiple times in the chest and the neck and then shot her in the head. He then turned to Ariana and shot her in the back and consequently turned the gun on himself and pulled the trigger. The police launched an investigation and soon discovered the truth behind the Kamal family tragedy. They found evidence of Rakesh's gambling and drinking problems and his financial troubles, as well as records of his abuse, violence, threats, and intimidation towards Ariana and Tina. It was concluded that Rakesh had killed his family and himself in a fit of rage and despair, and that it was a case of domestic violence. The news of the Kamal family tragedy spread like wildfire and shocked and saddened the nation. People could not believe that such a successful and respected family could have such a dark and twisted secret. People could not understand how Rakesh could have done such a terrible and evil thing to his wife and daughter who loved him and supported him. People could not imagine the pain and suffering that Tina and Ariana had gone through and the horror and fear that they had felt in their last moments. The police officers felt a chill run down their spines 
as they entered the House of Horrors. They had seen many crimes in their lives, but nothing like this. Rakesh, a seemingly normal and happy man, had brutally murdered his wife and two children before taking his own life. The bodies were perforated with gunshots, with blood splattered all over the walls and floors. The officers could not comprehend what kind of madness had possessed Rakesh to commit such an atrocity. They searched every corner of the house, hoping to find some clue that would explain his motive, but the house was immaculate and orderly as if nothing had ever happened. There was no sign of a break-in, a fight, or a disturbance. The only thing that seemed out of place was a pile of unopened mail on the kitchen counter. The officers opened the envelopes and found a collection of bills, notices, and letters. They scanned through them, looking for anything that could shed some light on Rakesh's state of mind. As the detectives sifted through the mail, they felt their jaws drop in disbelief. They had stumbled upon a shocking revelation that turned the case upside down. They learned that Rakesh had been living a lie and that he had been involved in a series of scandals and tragedies that had pushed him over the edge. They discovered that Rakesh had been sued by a former employee who had accused him of sexual harassment and wrongful termination. The court had ruled in favor of the plaintiff and Rakesh had been ordered to pay a huge amount of money as compensation. They also found out that Rakesh had been caught by the IRS for cheating on his taxes and committing fraud. He had been slapped with a massive fine and a possible prison sentence. To make matters worse, Rakesh had been diagnosed with a fatal brain tumor and he had only a few months to live. And as if that was not enough, Rakesh had received a letter from his mistress who had informed him that she was carrying his child and that she demanded him to leave his wife and marry her. The detectives were stunned by the extent of Rakesh's deception and desperation. They realized that Rakesh had been hiding a lot of secrets and problems from his family and friends and that he had been living a double life. They also speculated that Rakesh had been overwhelmed by the stress and guilt of his situation and that he had decided to end his life and take his family with him rather than face the consequences of his actions. The detectives found a note on the kitchen table written in Rakesh's shaky handwriting. It read, I'm sorry, I love you all, goodbye. They wondered what it meant and what had driven Rakesh to kill his family and himself. They speculated that Rakesh had written the note as a way of saying farewell to his loved ones, but that he had been too ashamed or afraid to reveal his true feelings or explain his reasons for his actions. They concluded that Rakesh had acted alone and impulsively and that he had not planned the shooting in advance. They decided to dig deeper into the murder-suicide and to uncover the motive and the background of the Kamal family. They discovered that Rakesh had bought the gun online from a shady dealer using a fake name and a disposable phone. He had received the gun a week before the massacre and had stashed it in his closet, where his wife and daughter never ventured. He had also deleted his browsing history and his phone records to erase any traces of his purchase and his contacts. He had been careful and cunning and had left no clues for the police to follow. The detectives concluded that Rakesh had killed his wife and daughter out of a twisted sense of revenge and despair and that he had acted alone and premeditatedly. They also ruled out any involvement of a third party and declared it a case of domestic homicide suicide. The case was closed, but the questions and the pain remained. Why did Rakesh do it? How could he do it? And what could have been done to stop it? The answers may never be known, but the lessons must never be forgotten. The mystery of the Kamal family's death deepened as the investigation revealed more secrets and lies behind the tragedy. The court documents showed that Rakesh Kamal had filed for divorce from Tina Kamal on December 14, 2023, just two weeks before he killed them and himself. He claimed that they had grown apart and asked for joint custody of Ariana Kamal, their teenage daughter. Unaware of her husband's intention to divorce her, Tina Kamal endured years of abuse in silence fearing for her own and her daughter's safety. Her only confidant was her sister in India, whom she told of her desire to flee from Rakesh, but without a clue of how to do it. Her life was a nightmare, and so was he. A powerful and influential man, he had made her countless threats. He vowed to ruin her, snatch her daughter, 
and even murder her if she ever dared to leave him. She felt imprisoned and hopeless. Her only reason to live was Ariana, whom she cherished and guarded. But Ariana Kamal was not spared from her father's cruelty either. He had inflicted physical and emotional wounds on her, such as the concussion she got in November 2023, when he struck her on the head during a quarrel. She had told her school counselor that it was an accident, but the counselor was skeptical. Ariana Kamal's college plans sparked a deadly conflict with her father on the day of the tragedy. She had earned a spot at Harvard University, but her father Rakesh insisted that she follow his footsteps and attend MIT, where he had studied computer science. He had also planned for her to join his company after graduation, but Ariana had a different vision for her future. She was passionate about music and aspired to be a violinist, and had secretly applied and got accepted to the Juilliard School. And the acceptance letter arrived on December 28, 2023. Rakesh was furious when he discovered Ariana's secret. He felt betrayed by his daughter and his legacy and threatened to disinherit her and cut off her funds. He also lashed out at Tina, his wife, for supporting Ariana's dreams and hurled insults at her. The Kamal family's case is a shocking illustration of how domestic violence can end in disaster. It also highlights the need for more assistance and protection for victims of abuse who often endure in silence and fear. Domestic violence is a hidden crime that affects millions of people around the world. It is a pattern of abusive behavior that one person uses to gain or maintain power and control over another person in an intimate relationship. It can take many forms, such as physical, sexual, emotional, psychological, or financial abuse. It can happen to anyone, regardless of age, gender, race, religion, or socioeconomic status. The Kamal family tragedy was a shocking example of how domestic violence can escalate to a fatal outcome. It was a reminder of the harsh reality and the grave danger of this social problem and the urgent need to prevent and stop it. It was also a reminder of the importance of love and compassion and the value of life. A tragedy that should never have happened and should never be forgotten. Experts and advocates warned that domestic violence is often a hidden and underreported problem, especially in wealthy and privileged communities where victims may face more obstacles and stigma to seek help. They also explained that domestic violence is not caused by stress, anger, or substance abuse, but by a pattern of power and control that one person imposes on another. They urged anyone who is experiencing or witnessing abuse to reach out to someone they trust, such as a friend, a family member, a counselor or a hotline and to make a safety plan to escape the situation. It reminds us of the need for more awareness, education and intervention to prevent and stop domestic violence and to support and empower the victims and survivors. It also challenges us to examine our own biases, stereotypes, and assumptions about domestic violence, and to listen and learn from the stories of those who have experienced it. The case was closed, but the mystery and the tragedy remained. Why did Rakesh do it? How could he do it? And what could have been done to stop it? The answers may never be known, but the lessons must never be forgotten. The Kamal family's case is a horrific example of how domestic violence can lead to fatal outcomes. It also shows how complex and multifaceted the issue of domestic violence is and how it can affect anyone, regardless of their race, class, gender, or background. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any feedback or opinions, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear from you and to know what you think. And if you have any ideas or requests, please let me know. I'm always looking for new topics and stories to cover, and I appreciate your suggestions and input. Until next time, stay safe and stay curious.